All right, so those of you uh, attending the meeting, welcome uh, to the 2023 season. I'm excited for the season. Um, it is fast approaching. I know it was one degree this morning, but it um, won't be too long before it's um, 33 degrees, 20 mile, 20 mile an hour wind, and teams are going to want to play. So um, let's get ready. Uh, what If you were here, those of you, uh, if you're on Facebook, um, we started a, a podcast, Time Out with PSOA, and it covers all sports officiating. Um, so I know there's two up there already. Uh, third one will be dropped on Wednesday. I um, mean, we're, we're going to be recording the next four um, this upcoming Thursday, focusing on baseball and softball uh, preparation. Um, so it is once a week. Um, it actually helps us out quite a bit. 30 minutes. Um, you're doing a walk, you're doing chores, you're mowing the grass, you know, take the time out, listen to it. And um, hopefully you could learn one or two things each podcast. Um, and then on Facebook, again, uh, find us PS away because I send out questions. I send out polls to add to this podcast to get an idea of what you as sports officials are looking for. Um, so when I do send out this PowerPoint, you click on that link, it'll take you straight to it. So our, our meeting today, um, these are the eight things we're going to go over. As we go over these eight things, if there's questions, do not leave here with questions. The, the ultimate purpose of, of, these, of this meeting today is encourage and reinforce the preparation we make now, February through March, is going to reap great rewards on the field, April through the fall season. All right, how many new umpires are here right now? Raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, not six, seven, eight. Awesome. Let's give them a round of applause of coming up as being umpires. How many of those new umpires are you afraid of people yelling at you? One. Sweet. The other seven aren't. I will tell you this. Out of the four sports we do, baseball and softball are the easiest if you just follow the training we give you. You will be better than 90% of all umpires, all in America, your first game. Okay. When you go to the two-hour training session, you will learn exactly what I mean about that. Just how we call strike, put the ball in play, call time will indicate how good of an umpire you are. All right. So take advantage of our education. If you do that, nobody's going to yell at you. All right. Second uh, goal, communicate to umpires what we need to do together so we get all assignments fulfilled. There's assigners here we'll introduce later on, all right? But as much work as we have to do, umpires have to do a little work so we could do our work efficiently. So we're gonna show how we work together to get that done. And then answer all questions on what umpire needs to be successful on and off the field. Equipment, uniform, communication, how to get access to rules if you can't make all the meetings, all right? Because if, if you can't make all the meetings, I get it. I understand it. But everything is recorded, all right? So um, take advantage of the situation. All right, so code of conduct. The only reason I put Dustin up here, this is uh, the accountant I use. Um, and if any other CPAs in here right now? No? Okay. Um, as an independent contractor, you are responsible for your own taxes. So I get it all the time. Hey, Sean, do I have to pay taxes? Are taxes taken out of the game checks? And the answer is, yes, you do have to pay taxes. No, it does not take out of your game check. Okay. And if, if you're like, I can't stand taxes, understand you use roads to get to the field. Who pays for those roads? We as taxpayers. Okay. So I always say, do your part. And doing your part is reporting what you make and expense what you spend to be a sports official. It, it almost always evens out. All right, so it's, don't hide it. Don't say you don't sports officiate. It will hurt you more than anything else. All right, just find a CPA. They know what they're doing. Um, it's really pretty easy for CPAs. Um, to do it. Any questions on that part of being an independent contractor? You make money and the tax process. All right, cool. Next one as an independent contractor is insurance. 
All right. Uh, so liability insurance is what we're talking about here. I uh, strongly support National Association of uh, Sports Officials because it covers every sport, every level. All right. If you're a high school NSAA or high school Iowa or American Legion, or you register USSSA safe sport, that only covers that group where NASO covers everything. All right, so if you are worried about insurance liability, all right, NASO is the way to go. God forbid you get hurt because somebody does something to you, a kid or player gets hurt, um, and a lawyer finds something, a rule application wasn't applied, so they come after you, you're covered. All right, you are covered there. Any questions on liability insurance? Yes. I, I know NASO. I pay $75 a year because I do it through a, a large umpire group, CBUA. Um, go ahead. I think uh, if you're a new umpire, it's uh, $124. And then I think the cheap is like $116. Like, yeah. If you're not a part of the other. Yep. So it's, again, it's an expense. That is an expense for you. So. Next one, um, and you'll see this on the, on the registration form that's gonna be all online. So people are like, hey, where's this registration form? You'll get it at the end. All right, so code of conduct, this is just the expectations, what you're signing up for, all right? Uh, update availability in arbitersports.com. All right, so people always say, why, why don't I have self-assign or why am I not getting more games? It's probably because you're not doing your part of the code of conduct of just letting us know when you're available for games. All right, we will go over how to do that today. Self-assigned games, um, you are available for. All right, so we'll go over self-assigned. You, you get to pick up your own games um, as long as you follow the code of conduct. Reply to emails with games, you can umpire. So those of you in basketball, you, you see every single week, games left available. All right, so reply to that email. Hey, I could work this game. I could work this game. Because you'd be surprised, even if you can't work a double header, you could just work one game, you are going to help an umpire out. All right, so I, I used Gary Hall as an example last week. He had to work five games in a row by himself. And I found out one umpire could have worked the one o'clock game. I'm like, why didn't you let us know? That could have gave Gary one plate break during the middle of the day. That would have been huge. So even if it's one game, you can make a big difference helping out a, a fellow umpire. So reply to those emails. Uh, communicate with the, uh, the assigner, the dates, times you are open. Um, this will be specifically um, connected to softball. But at any time, I think we have six assigners. You could email us. You could call us. You could leave a voicemail. You could text us. I know high schoolers. You could Snapchat us, those of us who have Snapchat. Any time that you are open on a day you wake up, I almost guarantee you that we can find you a game. Okay, so if you are looking to work and you're able to work, let us know. We, we will we'll find you a game. Um, and, and then the last one is you have to understand how important you are to a game. All right, so um, if an umpire doesn't show up to a game, what happens to that game? It's just practice or they go home. They don't play. So imagine yourself. I think everybody in here at some point played some sort of sport. How did you feel if an umpire or sports official didn't show up? Were you like, yay, they didn't show up? Or were you bummed? All right, that's how important you are to the game or the games you sign up for. And if you think, oh, I'll just call Jeff. Jeff will find a replacement for me. No, he, that's easy. No, Jeff works 80 hours a week at his day job. Oh, I'll call Sean. That's easy for Sean. I might be on the field doing a doubleheader for a college baseball game. I don't have 24-7, 365 access. Now, will we work our butt off to fill a game? Yes, because that's what the players deserve. Every game deserves an umpire. But understand when you accept a game, how important you are to that game. And you can't just throw it off to another signer to cover it. Okay. Uh, so that's the code of conduct. Um, professionalism, proper uniform and equipment. 
right? So we, we do that one for you look good. If you look good, people leave you alone. You control your uniform. If you look good in uniform, people will leave you alone, all right? Um, second thing, equipment for protective. Do not go cheap, cheap, cheap on equipment. When we go into new umpires, if you need help buying equipment, we get you right in the middle of the road. We don't get you cheap. We don't get you really, really expensive. I don't go cheap on equipment. One, it will break really, really quick. Two, you're more likely to get hurt. All right, so protect yourself. Communication with coaches. And if you have a partner before each and every game, any former coaches out there, what's one of your biggest concerns every single game if there is no communication like 10 minutes before the game? Where's the umpire? That coach already got their pitcher catcher warming up. That coach has a pregame, you know, routine. And if you start messing with that coach's pregame routine and they're worried about stressing, is there going to be an umpire? That stress is going to carry over to the first inning, right? If you communicate in the morning, hey, coach, I'm at Keystone Field number seven tonight. I plan on being there at 530 for the six o'clock first tip or first pitch. That coach is like, Oof, awesome. And then if rain hits, guess what the coach is going to do? Text you or call you back and say, hey, the game's off. Right? So now you're not showing up to the field. Nobody's there. Right? Um, then you get to the game. All right, get there at 530. Check in with the coach. Hey, coach, umpire, Sean Johnston. I'll be out at the plate uh, meeting to do the plate at about 555. Again, now that coach is like, all right, now this umpire's credible. He actually did exactly what he said he was going to do. Showed up at 530, checked in with him. You've now made it to the fifth inning without any complaints from that coach. Okay, so give yourself that uh, oomph, that credibility, that trust. All because of uniform, all because of equipment, all because of communication and showing up on time. As I, I will tell you, every single time there is an issue, it always starts with one of those four things. Look bad in uniform showed up late and did not do something they could control that they could do. It's not because of a strike three call judgment call. It's not because of a force play slide rule at second base. It is always something we could control. So control it. All right, I'm going to see who is. All right. The, um, Oh, that's a good one. No, there it is. All right, 2000, the, the last part of the code of conduct, which you'll see online, um, is the dues. So you will see um, rates have gone up in different areas this year. Every single year I do this, our rates of working keep on going up. Your due rates are staying the same, if not going down. All right, so this year stays exactly the same. So if you choose full PSOA uh, membership, so this covers every single sport. So if you do basketball, if you do football, just do it one time. You don't have to worry about it in August. You don't have to worry about it in October. It also gives you the education course ump app. Full umpire membership. So you don't work football. You don't work basketball. $75. All right. Um, and that gives you access again to ump app. If you only want to umpire, you don't want to take advantage of ump app for whatever reason, it's $50. Okay, and that gives you baseball and softball all season long. So there's not going to be a spring dues and a summer dues and a fall dues. It is one time and you covered the whole entire 2023 uh, fiscal year. New umpires. So there's eight of them in this room. I'm sure there's some of them online. This is not mandatory, so do not be like $350 to umpire. No. All right, we just offer it if you need help buying uniform and equipment. Because baseball and softball is the most expensive sport to get started. Right, so if you don't have all the money to buy the equipment and uniform, we will do it for you. All right, if you do have $350 and you don't know exactly what to buy, who to buy it from, I'm really good at it. Right, it's really easy. It takes me about three minutes per umpire. Boom, I'll do it for you. And then you just pay the 350 So with the new umpire, you get the ump app education course. 
You'll get a mask, shin guards, chest protector, pants, shirt, indicator, belt, or not belt, uh, indicator and brush. So you will get the required uniform done by myself, shipped to your house. You don't have to worry about anything else. Because right, as a new umpire, you, you don't know what shirt to get. You don't know, oh my, which one should I pick? Which one should I choose? We, I know what's going to be best for you. Okay. And then the next learning process will go as you start working games. Yes. I love it. Yes, you can work it off. All right. So if you have the, the finances to pay it up front, sweet. If you don't, when you start working games, half of your game fee goes towards the equipment. Half of your game fee um, goes to you. And I put that in Arbiter Sports under notes. So if you're supposed to get paid $60 for a game and you only get 30, it's like, what the heck? Why do I only get 30? It's probably because the other 30 went towards equipment and dues. And I'll put that note in Arbiter Sports for you. Okay. Um, the last thing I will say about Ump App course, there is nothing you have to do to register with Ump App. All right, we have our own specific uh, URL for PSOA. So like if you go to ump.app right now and register, it's $50. Don't do it, All right? Because we pay for it when you register through us. And then I send you a specific, hey, use this URL. Because then I'm able to actually see who's using the ump app course, how much has it been completed. All right, so don't pay your dues and then pay another $50 to unpack. We register you for unpack. Okay. All right. All right. If you guys are at home, if you guys could mute yourself, I'm trying to figure out who's not muted. Anyone good at how to mute all? Participants, mute all. Yes. All right. Sweet. So the next question is, how the heck do we pay dues? If you are paying check or cash, do not pay dues today. Uh, I'm not organized to just put stuff in my pocket and keep track of it. All right. So at one of our next education meetings that we're going to offer, if you're going to pay cash um, or check, please bring it to the, the future education meetings. Um, if you have Venmo, you can send it as a friend. This is my Venmo. If you have PayPal, it's, that's my email I use for the PayPal. All right. Um, again, on the QR code registration form at the end, you just indicate which way um, you're going to pay the dues. And the question was, can we do it out of the game fees? Yes, you could do it out of the game fees if, if you need um, the financial help. All right. All right. That is the first part. Anything over code of conduct, expectations we're asking from you, or dues. Okay. All right, pay mints, arbiter pay. All right, so there are quite a few contracts where they pay the umpires on the field. Um, Suburban, Royals, Bellevue Bruins, uh, Fremont. Um, Blair Little League. Mm -mm. Anyone think of off the top of your head under some other big ones I'm missing? A lot of singleton teams. Um, so they're not part of a huge group. They're just part of a small group. Um, so in Arbiter, if it says zero, you will get paid for that game. You're just going to get paid at the field. All right. And if you see 55 or if you see 60, in arbiter pay, that means that we're going to pay you the next day. All right. So when we get into arbiter, if you don't have it set up yet, it's super easy. Click payments, click logo, and you set up your account information just like you would for Venmo, just like you would for PayPal. Umpires from last year. Any concerns, any complaints, anything we could do better? with Arbiter Pay if you did not like it. I was about to say, last meeting, 
Nobody had any complaints. I have more complaints over cash and check because coaches don't give it to us at the plate meeting. Another very common one. Hey, Sean, can I get another check? I washed my pants and my check was in my pants. And I'd be like, you're asking the wrong guy. All right. Um, so if you do get paid at the plate meeting, make sure you transport it into your wallet so you don't lose it. All right. Um, and coaches are instructed to give you the, because it's one pitch full pay uh, for our games. So once that plate meeting is over, that game has started, that's when that payment should be um, given to you. And then if you call the player out right at the end of the game against the home team, you don't have to have that interaction at the car after the game. Okay. Um, uniform, equipment. All right, as we said, all right, we got a mask. We have indicator. We got breasts. We got shin guards, chest protector, um, a ball bag. This is an example of a shirt, of a shirt. And then U-Triple-S-A. So U-Triple-S-A softball will get into a little bit more. They are going to have their own new shirts this year. Right? Don't go out and buy new U-Triple-S-A shirts yet. Wait until Brandon sure has them. Um, you're going to get a 50% discount. All right, so don't go online and buy the $52 shirt that's out there. So that's just for softball? Yep, that's for softball. Um, same thing. So PS Away, um, at our education meetings, we will have hats. I am going to be handing out hats at our upcoming education meetings. Um, U-Triple-S-A softball, you can wear U-Triple-S-A softball hats. Umpires, baseball umpires, if you have a U-Triple-S-A hat, go for it. The only thing I will ask um, is whatever group that you are working for, whether it's our group, whether it's another group, high school group, Iowa, Nebraska, wear the patches and logo that group you are working is representing. Uh, so if you're working a U-Triple-S-A tournament for softball, don't wear a USA softball hat. Right? You wear the PSOA hat or wear an all-black hat. And in fairness, if you're working a USA softball event, right, don't wear a U-Triple-S-A hat. It's just it's common courtesy. Again, you're bringing negative attention to yourself as an umpire. So American Legion wants you to wear an American Legion patch. Even though we assign it, you are asked to wear an American Legion patch. NSAA High School, wear the NSAA patch. That's what they're asking of you to do. So don't bring negative attention because you're not wearing the appropriate hat or patch. Um, some optional equipment. I don't have an example of a thermal jacket. Um, it's in the car. But again, there's tons of shirts to choose from. We get all umpires should have this black shirt. Every single baseball umpire have this black shirt. All right, softball. If you are new to softball, all right, I am probably, if you get the new package, I'm going to get you the red one. If you hold off a little bit for softball, we'll wait until the U-Triple-S-A shirts come in um, from Brandon Sure. Okay, but everyone, baseball-wise, should have the black. If you want more, you work with a lot of partners, you work five games in a day, you're going to want to switch shirts. So you can go Carolina Blue. You can get the black, pretty much all black. It's just try to match your partner as best as you possibly can. Okay, so we get everybody the black. So everybody can match, um, but you can get more. If you're working high school or above, I recommend getting plate and base pants. If you're a new umpire, we get you a combo. So when you're working a plate, your shin guards are tight pressed to your um, shin guards. Now, if you advance to high school, Again, if you're wearing combo pants out on the bases, you're going to stick out like a pretty sore thumb. And guess who the coach is going to go after? Even if you get 10 calls correct, you're in combo pants. All right? Um, so look the part at that level you're working. Uh, if, again, everybody gets one hat, we're going back to the old style. So it's just going to be PSO in the front. It is going to be adjustable in the back, but it's the breathable one. It's not going to be the, the uh, trucker hat is what they called it last year. 
All right, so uh, do I have tips? Yes. All right, some expectations. All right, hat worn forward. Right, so the hats that we have, I, I'm not sure if they're gonna be eight stitch or six stitch. Um, it, all, it really depends on availability, to be honest with you. So even if it's eight stitch, an umpire mask could fit on an eight stitch uh, hat. And you actually want your mask to fly off when the foul ball hits your head. Veteran umpires, why do you want your mask loose so the mask flies off your head? All right, less impact. Anybody really good at science and physics in this room? If the mask flies off of your head, where does the force go? In the mask. If the mask stays on your face, where does the force go? Into your body. All right, so you actually want to wear that mask loose. That's the stuff we will uh, help cover in training. So hat worn forward. Do not wear it backwards. We are not going to wear our hat backwards unless we see a major league umpire wear their hat backwards. Okay? Not going to happen. Shirt tucked in, all right? Um, it's a funny story, embarrassing story, but I'm going to say it anyways. It was not me, but it was one of our umpires. What's on the backstop of every single game we work? Cameras, all right? What side of our body is showing on that camera? Backside. And when you squat, guess what happens to your pants and shorts? Rip. It could rip. Down, so if it's not tucked in, guess what's shown? Yeah. Your crack. All right. So don't be that umpire with your crack showing on Facebook Live on YouTube channel. All right. Keep the shirt tucked in. Have a belt on. All right. Save yourself. Yeah, the whole game. The whole game. Okay. Wrinkle free. And it's really easy to be wrinkle free. Just fold them. Don't just wrinkle them up and throw them in your trunk. I see umpires do that. Pull up, pull up to the field, open up the trunk. <sighs> Boom, it's wrinkled. Now you get to control that just by folding your pants. Shoes clean as possible at the start. All right. I know our fields are very dusty. All right. But when you go from game one to game two and you actually go to the plate meeting with clean shoes to begin, Again, it's that first impression. That goes, you're like, oh, they actually took some time to put some water on their shoes and clean their shoes. All right. It that small little message goes a far way. And then wearing the patch and hat, who assigned you? Respect that group, respect that organization, whichever one um, is paying you. Because I will say you this at athletic events that we work, think about how many people are there. How many are actually getting paid? What two? Okay. The umpires. Typically, baseball, softball events, unless it's an elite organization, they pay their coaches. You are the only ones being paid. Understand that, that it, you are the ones being paid there. So people expect some type of return on their investment all right so i will say uh, some organizations charge six hundred dollars to play baseball i had another coach thirty eight hundred dollars to play baseball all right so that's what you're walking into as a baseball umpire respect that um, and own it all right oh i know this is being recorded so i'm going to make an emphasis on this because they changed on us again. So if you were at the last meeting and you're watching this recording, what was that code again? All right, the code is now PSOA 23. So purchaseofficials.com, again, if you click on this link, it'll take you straight to the website. It's a 15% discount on um, being a member of Premier Sports. If you are buying a bundle, the discount will not work. Uh, they've already put that discount in there. Was that 15? I don't know. I thought it was always 15. 
Um, and then if you are buying something brand new, right, you're not going to be able to have that discount code. Uh, so it's your it's for your regular uniform stuff, regular upgrade stuff that that discount code works. Locally, you could go to Hoff Sporting Goods, Primetime Sports uh, Sporting Goods. I, especially since if you're not living right by that area, call the store, make sure they have what you are looking for. Because as the season goes, they do run out of supply um, with supply and demand. Um, but obviously purchase officials, they'll send it to you and you know exactly what they have in stock um, before the season. All right, our education again, so what we reap now is what we're, our, what we saw now is what we're gonna reap throughout the season. Next week in this room, February 5th, we're going to go over definitions. 10 o'clock to 11.30 is baseball. 11.30 to 1 is going to be softball. You know, what is a strike? What is a ball? What is fair? What is foul? What is catch? What's a legal slide? What's an illegal slide? All right? What's an illegal pitch? What's a balk? All right? Um, we are going to go over as many definitions as we possibly can. Um, I, I will tell you every single time I teach one of these classes, I learn something new. Or it's like, oh, I forgot about that. Okay, so all of our instructors, if it's not led by me, they are veteran umpires who've been around the block a time or two. They are professionally trained at professional umpire schools, or they work at a very high college level. So um, I teach class, sports fishing class. There are so many times where I will teach a, I call it myth. And they're like, you don't know what you're talking about. You're crazy. I'm like, no, I actually am the, the teacher. I, I know what the rule is. Yes, I know what coaches have been telling you for the past 20 years, but this is the real rule. All right, so take advantage of this. Uh, February 12th, I know it's Super Bowl, all right, but we will be done by one o'clock, way before the Super Bowl. February 19th, hitter. And then February 26, um, that will be pitcher. 26 will be pitcher rules. All right, so that batter, runner, pitcher. I'm just going to switch that right now. Batter, runner, pitcher. And we will use Ump app quite a bit in conjunction with those meetings um, because it has video all right so ump app will use as well all those are 10 to 11 or 11 baseball. baseball's 10 to 11 30 softball's 11 30 to 1 i'll post it as an event in arbitersports.com you'll get that annoying thing at 3 37 in the morning reminding you that there's an event coming up okay i don't know i wish i could change the time of day that's sent out i i have not figured that out yet all right, so rules. Where the heck do I find rules? This podcast says spend one, th one to three hours a week reading rules. All right, so when I post this PowerPoint, if you click any of these, it will take you to the USSSA website. It will be like, all right, we follow original baseball rules, Major League Baseball rules. Shoot, where do I find those? Here. Now, I will say this USSSA has not adopted 2023 Major League Baseball rules with the shifting, with only three pickoffs before a balk is called and the runners are advanced one base. We are not using those new Major League rules this year in neutral plus A baseball. Uh, so I still actually have two, uh, I think it's 2019 rule book. All right. Because that is still the rules you triple SA is abiding by is the 2019 rules from Major League Baseball. Um, same thing with U Triple SA softball. If you click there, U Triple SA softball rule book will um, pop up. If you register U Triple SA, you'll get um, access to even more rules with the safe sport. If you, when you register NFHS Iowa or Nebraska, they will sit, uh, send you rule books, case books, mechanics manual. Same thing with American Legion baseball. You register, then it's all online. It's online rule book for American Legion Baseball. All right, so you join PSOA, you get access to all these rule books in Arbiter Sports. Register high school, they send you rule books. 
Register American Legion online rule books. Okay, so you have no reason not to have access to rules. Print them, download them, read them. On-field training sessions. So we ask um, new umpires to begin the season. We almost, I say almost, almost make it mandatory. All right, so there are some unique situations where it's like, nope, you have previous experience, so you're new to us. All right, go out there to work. I'm going to put you with Brian Lambie. Brian Lambie will text me if you're good or bad. I, ain't that true? That's <laughs> true. All right. Uh, but March 4th, 5th, 11th, and 12th, um, we have a sports complex down in Bellevue that will have umpire training. All right. Depending on how many teams sign up, we will, we're using these. So new umpires get live reps. Uh, so last year, if the game started at 10 o'clock, we met down there at 9 o'clock. We just went over basic signals and positioning. And then we use the game to say, all right, are you making the correct calls? Are you in the right spot making the correct calls? Um, after those first two weekends, all right, we're going to be working with Elkhorn, Bennington, Miller during their spring breaks to get on field training in gyms. Uh, so if you have a spring break in March in, in Millard, I might reach out to Millard South. Hey, could we bring in umpires and invite your PE classes to do some on-field training? Uh, so we organize that. And then in April is when UBA really becomes available because now the teams are outside. So we usually offer one training every single week, April, May, and yes, June, All right, which we'll get into why. Why the heck are you training umpires in June? Big reason why. College World Series. We will continue the Monday nights uh, during the season where we meet um, at Tanner's or DJ's dugout. If you guys have questions, it's camaraderie. That's one of the things about being a sports official that people don't realize is the friendships and relationships you make. Um, and this is a time we get to get together and vent our successes and fun stuff that happened the previous week. All right, so um, it, it's a great thing for mentoring too. If you come to these meetings and if you're available, people can mentor you and, and, and help you through the process as, as an umpire where we go over rules, mechanics, situations that came up, and game management. What would you do if the coach did this to you? Because we got to learn how to do, do that stuff. It's not natural. All right, some umpire opportunities. All right, no matter, you know, there's uh, some people in this meeting, you wanna, all they want to do is wreck baseball, wreck softball. That's cool. We got that. We got you. Some want to work U-Triple-S-A events. Cool. We got that. Okay. Some want to work high school. Excellent. We got that. Um, some want to only work summer. Sweet. American Legion baseball. We got that. U-Triple-S-A baseball. We got that. There might be some people who want to travel the whole nation all year round and work baseball every single weekend. Guess what? We got that. It's the Triple Crown. I know uh, they have a huge tournament in Arizona, very similar to ours in June in, in Nebraska. They're looking for umpires throughout the whole world, uh, whole yeah world, but definitely the nation. If you get yourself to these uh, Triple Crown events, they pay for your hotel. Typically, the complexes take care of you, food and drink wise, and it's sixty five dollars a game. All right, I think um, last week somebody said they're paying one hundred and fifty dollar uh, travel stipend. Uh, so as long as you uh, you show up, you work your games, at the end of it, you not only do you get your game fees, but then you get $150 for the travel stipend. Uh, and, and they do. They have tournaments every single weekend. Uh, so if you get in that network, you can do it. Are you guys going to Arizona, Bert? All right. So Bert is going to Arizona making a paid vacation is what I call it. I don't lose money. I'm not going to make money. Oh, nice. Even better. Um, so, uh, the other thing that's not on here is little league baseball. All right. So right now we don't have any umpires in quote unquote, their, their system. If you want to work the little league world series and areas that you see on TV in July and August, you can, we have access to that. Just like any of the, these other groups, you register, 
you have to go through their specific education courses and then you're part of the process. Okay, so I know Tom Hendricks was talking about, he's interested, so I got to send him the link. Um, but Little League Baseball, we have it at Keystone, we have it at Blair, and the uh, state tournament is in the Omaha area this year. Uh, so if Little League Baseball entices you, again, we have that opportunity uh, there for you to take advantage of it. If there's anything you ever want to do as an umpire, I promise you, you have the opportunity to do it with us. Anyone want to become a major league baseball umpire? All right. We have that information to get you to the major leagues. All right. If you truly do, every single education opportunity you have, take advantage of it because that's where we get our information. We made up absolutely nothing in our education. We borrowed it slash stole it from professional umpire school. So use it. Everything we're going to sign is not up here. Um, I will say this, we did not lose any contracts from last year. So if there's a team or tournament that you did last year, we are signing it again this year. Um, these are some examples of what we are doing. Pay setters, uh, ultimate baseball camp, so the gladiators. Uh, Storm Chasers is a pavilion. Bellevue Bruins, Omaha Dirt Dogs plays at El Bays in South Omaha. Suburban Stampede and Omaha Royals combined this year. So if you're not seeing a lot of Royal stuff, it's because they combine with Stampede. Same field, though, Somerset, Trenwood, Lampfield, and uh, Dodge Park. Millard United, Gretna Thunder, um, River City Sports is, um, there's three USSA tournaments. Uh, Wally Knight runs, that's what River City Sports is. Uh, the Blair Cubs, Blair Little League, um, Fremont Nighthawks will still do that. And there's three weekends of USSA State in, in July, July 4th weekend and the two after. USSA softball tournaments, uh, there'll be Bennington, Elkhorn, Fremont, Bellevue. All right, well, we've been told uh, USSA softball, Grand Island, if there's tournaments in Grand Island, Columbus, they're going to find their own umpires. Uh, so USSA umpires, when we get into that, if there's a slow weekend, it's like, oh, I'll go to Columbus or Grand Island, Contact Brandon Sure. What's that? Yeah. You don't know what it is for these guys. Um, then Rec, Millard, uh, Gretna, Papillion, and Westgate for softball. Keystone Little League, Papillion, Council Bluffs is, is actually a new contract for us. And we told them we'd have a good idea by March how many new umpires we have that are willing to work Rec to let them know, hey, all right, we got. 20 new umpires that are willing to work rec. All right. And they're like, all right, sweet. Because really this first year with Council Bluffs, we're going to do everything we can to fill it with new umpires. And then they're going to backfill it with stuff they're doing with their local athletes. Um, so, but they, they do want trained umpires. That's their big thing. They want trained umpires. And then Millard United, again, they try to fill their own. We help fill. Same thing with Elkhorn Athletic Association. So if you live in Millard and you live in Elkhorn and you want to work those rec games, um, contact them because they will have you work those rec games. Um, I know it's being recorded. Our rates are a little bit higher. So if you hold out, you might get a higher rate. Umpire opportunities to advance. All right, so um, as I said last week, I am really, really, really good at reading body, body language and behavior. Really good at it. That's part of sports officiating. I cannot read one single person's mind in this room. I am not a mind reader. That is not my gift. So if you are looking to advance, please let me know. All right. I, I might tell you, hey, you're not ready yet, but I'm going to do what I can to get you around certain umpires. And then certain games to push you to advance. And then there might be some, some umpires where you've only picked up 11, 12-year-old USSA games in the past. So I'm like, I thought that was your go-to. Then all of a sudden, you're like, no, I want to work college, Sean. It's like, whew, wish I knew that because you can work college. All right, so let me know if you are looking to advance. Um, ways to advance. Attend one of our clinics. 
I, I strongly, strongly, strongly suggest that. If you have not been to one of our advanced clinics, don't go somewhere else in the nation yet. Start with us. We will tell you what is the next advanced clinic to go to um, around the nation. Because be honest with you, most of the assigners I work with in college, I could call and say, all right, Jeff Kopetsky is really good. Put him on any game with me in any conference. And all of a sudden, Jeff gets five games without even going to that clinic. Uh, so you could save yourself money there. Um, so that's step number one. Step number two, um, I do majority of my hiring in the Great Plains, which is an NAI conference, Midland, Hastings, Dome, Victoria, uh, Morningside, Briarcliff, beautiful Jamestown, North Dakota. All right. I hire from our clinics. That's where I hire from. Get into the GPAC. I work with Andrew Fulton in Iowa JUCO. You make it through Iowa JUCO and NAI baseball. I work with Chad Eichens in the Northern Sun, John Brower in the MIAA. All right. You want to go beyond this eight state region, CBUA now, because all the Power Five reconfiguration is now West Coast to East Coast. They assign Division One baseball, um, Power Five. Right, so that's what you're looking for. Um, I know we have some people online who are really interested in Independence Baseball League. Right? What that is, it's a summer college baseball league. Right, so we're responsible for the ILB. All right, Independence uh, League Baseball. Our closest one is um, Fremont Moo, uh, Hastings Sodbusters. And then we are, um, this is new, but we are going to do the summer college in Gearing and North Platte still. All right, so if you're looking for summer college baseball, wood bat, nine innings, uh, we have that as well. Okay. So, but you got to communicate to somebody, hopefully me. Because um, that gets you down that path of advancing. All right. Very important numbers here. Uh, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six current assigners. All right. Assigners don't know this yet, but we have a plan this year. We'll see if the plan works. Um, but I would save these phone numbers. Maybe even text these phone numbers. Introduce yourself so we can save your phone number into our phones. Um, but we do a lot of texting, a lot of calling, a lot of emailing, and these are the numbers you can contact 24 7, 365. I'm available. Right? Um, there are times at 3 30 in the morning, if I get a text message, that text message, hey, I could work tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock in the morning. By 3 40 in the morning, I can have sent you a game break. Man, Jesus, is Sean asleep? <laughs> Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Um, so very important slide. Save those numbers, text those numbers, call those numbers. And this email on the bottom, this goes to every single assignment. So yes, I have my own personal email. Jeff has his own personal email. But that's the email. It will go to every single assigner. So an assigner, whoever is the first one to respond, they'll respond to it. So if you need games, <laughs> right? Games, things change. So I'm trying to make it a call because she can take care of it. did you just hear that? Jeff wants to compete this year. <laughs> yes. Um, well, uh, let's introduce it. Jeff, introduce yourself. Yeah. 
I'm the blunt guy. <laughs> I'll tell you, I don't care. I know you're not doing your job if I'm, if I'm being blunt to you. I'll just tell you, Sean will kind of say, well, you need to do it this way. You do that. I'll just tell you, you don't like it. I don't care. <laughs> that is true. You're not doing your job. I'm not being hard on you. I just want you to be better. Tom? Um, I'm in my second year of the study. If you guys would keep your blocks current and tell the sign, then I'd be out of all right. Our goal this year, which we'll get into the incentive program, is to have Tom lose his job. You guys heard that. All right, Corey. Uh, Corey Bremer. I am a softball signer for Sean for this will now be my third season. <clears throat> what I would have to say for those of you that work both softball and baseball, looking to work U Triple SA softball tournaments. If you work them both, Block your weekends on Arbor and what and one more softball. I should say that. Block your weekends on Arbor and let me know you block them for softball. Do that. Uh, text me there or even the email um, to get my personal email that I use for this. But block the weekend and let me know that I can get your softball games anyway. And then in the event that I don't have softball games for you, there's always baseball. And then you contact Jeff and Tom and keep Tom working. <laughs> um, hey, my softball fell through. What do you got me for baseball? I can guarantee they got something for you. Yes, we do. Um, but yeah, if you want to work softball and you work them both, block your weekend. If they get their schedule two weeks in advance, they will fill your schedule before I even know what games I have. And we'll talk more about that, the softball communication and the best practice. So you're working the games you want to work. Um, we're not just going to force you to do softball or force you to do baseball. If you'd rather do softball over baseball, that's cool. All right, we, we want umpires working games they want to work. You're a better umpire that way. All right. All right, so some contracts. Um, the actual price of the yellow is where the pay went up. Um, so that's what the yellow indicates. I'm trying to move this so we go. All right. Uh, so college JV games to the GPAC. We do Midland, Concordia, Briarcliff, Morningside, Mount Marty. If you want to go to uh, beautiful, um, where's Mount Marty? Help me out. Yankton, South Dakota. Thank you. Uh, $80 per game. We play doubleheader. So it's $160 uh, for the night. Uh, Nebraska Reserve Baseball, so freshman, um, is 60. That's the same. American Legion Baseball, 70 for JV, 80 for varsity. I think that went up 10 um, this year. Um, Sioux City High School is the same, 60 for freshman, 70 for JV, 80 for varsity. And the good thing about Sioux City High School, it starts in May and goes through June, is if you're from Omaha and you want to, I, people typically do do this, you go for four games. So you go for two freshman games, 11 and one, hour and a half time limits, drop dead, hour and a half time limits. So you make 120 there, you have a break, and then you go work two JV games or two varsity games at night. All right, so it's actually four games, and then you have a break, and then you come home at the end of the night. Does everybody understand what drop dead means? It's over. And the question, the question is, is the is the Legion rates the same as Sioux City rates? Yes. Again, it's the same. They're, they're matched now. The difference is in Sioux City, if you're traveling from Omaha, I want to get you four games up there. Where American Legion is just the two games, Junior Legion, Senior Legion. Um, select baseball. 
the, the raise is, is eight, uh, seven U through 12 U. It's going to be $60, all right? Because a lot of those organizations, they only want one umpire, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Um, sometimes they want one umpire for tournaments. If they go one umpire for tournaments, you triple SA, seven U through 12 U, it's $60 per game for that one umpire. Um, we got feedback last year from new umpires. I don't want to work by myself. I want to work with my friend. If you want to work with a friend, we are willing to go $30, $30 on those one umpire games. So teams only want one umpire. They budgeted for one umpire, $60. But you're like, I don't care if I work two games with my friend and make $60. I'd rather work with a partner. We could do that. All right, so if, if that's a, a deal breaker for you, we could put you out there with a friend and do two umpires, 8U, 9U, 10U, 11U, 12U. It'll just be $30 per umpire. Okay. Um, same for select baseball, 13U, 14U. Very few teams want one umpire. What typically happens is we can't get two umpires. All right. So if you're working a 13U, 14U by yourself, it's $70 for that game. Um, Little League Baseball, Blair and Keystone, $40 per game. U Triple SA Select Softball. All right, this is a change this year. We talked about safe sport registration with U Triple SA, talked about new uniform. So that's the give, um, or, or that's the take, what they are giving. If you register U Triple SA Softball this year, 14 U and below, you're going to get paid $50 per game. So you're like, nope, I don't want to register a neutral blessing. Nope, I don't want to get a new uniform. So you don't want to pay the additional hundred dollars. You only need to get paid forty dollars for it. Okay, so you do the math. If you can get a new uniform, you register a neutral blessing, say safe sport, seventy five dollars. You invest an additional hundred. You work ten games. You already made that money back. Most of the time, you triple say umpires they work a hundred games in a season. That's a pretty nice pay raise. Okay, um, so then high school, 15U through 18U. It'll be $60 if you're certified, 50 if you're not certified. So long story short, you invest in your craft software, you get a $10 raise. If you don't invest in your craft, it's the same rates as it was the previous two years. <clears throat> um, the other thing we will say about Utah Plus, say football, they are paying through Arbiter Pay this year. So our U Triple S A softball events for, um, down in Bellevue, so E N S, Brand Insurance tournaments are going to be paid through Arbiter Pay. Will be same exact thing as baseball every single day. The next day you will get paid for your games. Um, rec baseball forty, rec softball thirty five, uh, men's baseball league seventy five for seven innings, ninety dollars for nine innings. That's the difference of the rates there. We'll find out this week if we're going to do a, a men's slow pitch softball league. If we do get the league and you work men's slow pitch softball, it'll be $30. I will send a specific email to those umpires who do slow pitch. Um, and if you want to work the league with the rules that they have for $30 per game, we'll send that out. Uh, so it's actually kind of weird how they're doing it. It, 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 no, it's, it's a whole death separate league. It, it, it's a unique league is what I will say. All right. So with a unique league, it's not for every single umpire, but there are going to be umpires. Like, I like that concept. I like that. Okay. So here's our process. Um, high school. We only have one high school for the spring. That's UTAN and Ashland. They co-op. Um, I plan on sending out the whole entire UTAN and Ashland games this week. So based on your registration, you let me know, yes, I want to work high school, sweet. Those who say they want to work high school, I send you games. If you are on a high school game, I expect you to register NSAA. Uh, so if you don't want to register NSAA, don't check mark, yes, I want to do high school. Um, and then from that list, I get the best available umpires on those games. Select umpires. Through our education process, through previous experience, you earn a rank of 200 to 299. So if you are brand new, 
and you're like, whoa, that umpire is really good. You don't have to have 500 games underneath your belt to earn a 200 rank. All right? If you show us that you could umpire, you're going to have that 200 rank. 200 rank allows you to see every select baseball game, both position, crew chief, and umpire one. 250 allows you to see umpire one, two person, and then all 12 U through 8 U select baseball games. So to earn a, what they call lower ranking, you get to see more games. Um, with that, you have self-assigned. So people say, hey, how do I get self-assigned? Join PSOA, get educated. As long as you get educated, as long as you join PSOA, you are going to have self-assigned. And that's how you get self-assigned. Recreation will be ranked 300. So 300 rank means you are, you sign up. Like, I only want to do recreational baseball or softball. So boom, we're going to rank you 300 and you only see rec games when you self-assign. And there, we don't really force you to do all the education because they just want an umpire who wants to be out there for rec sports. All right, so um, give back to the community. And they don't want the, the pressure of all those select coaches and parents. Here's our bonus structure. This is um, for... Uh, it is for softball minus tournaments. We'll get into the bonus structure with softball tournaments next. All right, but there is going to be self-assigned softball. There's going to be tons of self-assigned baseball. Again, our goal this year, Tom left the room, but our goal this year is to make sure Tom doesn't have a job at the end of the year. Okay. So believe it or not, these teams pay Premier Sports Officials Association to assign games. That money they paid PSOA to assign games, I used to pay Jeff, Tom, Corey, Jared. Right, so our assigners do get paid from those assigning fees. So if you as umpires self-assign your games, that means our assigners did not do their job because you did it before they were able to. So you think it's right to pay the assigners, right? So if you're the assigner assigning your own games, who should get paid? You, the umpires. Okay, so that's our incentive this year. All right, so if you self-assign 200 games at the end of the year, I'm going to take the money we earn as an association from those coaches and give you $500 because you did the assigning. All right, so that's an incentive. If you self-assign 150 games, again, you did the assigning work. $200 is going to be given to you at the end of the year. And if you self-assign 100 games, it's a $100 bonus. What's that? Yep. So, well, probably, that's a great question. Fall ball games probably will not count because these bonuses are going to be paid for. Now, if you work 200 Self-assigned fall ball games, which I don't think there is 200. <laughs> yeah. 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 This is going to be probably March through July. That's actually a good question. March through July. So softball. All right. We'll talk about softball here. As Corey said, if you go to the USSA website, those of you who've been doing USSA softball, you see all the events, like every single event and the tournament director. And if you don't know which ones we're assigning, just contact Corey. So it's like, all right, these 12 events down in Bellevue, I want to work all 12 weekends down in Bell Bellevue. You're going to email Corey and say, Corey, I want to work all 12 weekends down in Bellevue. This day, I can work all day. This day, I can only work in the morning. This day, I can only work afternoon, evening shift. Corey is a very organized person. He will take that email. He will know, all right, Joe Linhart, all day these 10 days, half day in the morning these 10 days, half day in the afternoon these 10 days. So when he does get the schedule, he's going to go back to that document, and he's going to override those blocks in Arbiter, which we told Joe to put in Arbiter, so he gets on those games. Because we do know there are going to be games played in all those U.S.A. tournaments. 
You'll see that right now, I think Brandon has over 200 teams signed up for his, for his events. They're going to be played. How many games? We don't know yet. They, they typically don't know that till, like Corey said, Tuesday or Wednesday week of, which I beg and plead for him to change that. But I, I understand both sides of the story. So softball, if your first preference is USSA fast pitch softball, the date you give Corey, I want to work softball this date, you're going to block in Arbiter Sports so the other five assigners don't send you games. Because I promise you, if Joe Linhart wanted eight softball games, it's a small tournament, and we give him the option, hey, Joe, you want to work four softball games or do you want to work six baseball games? All right? Now he's going to have that option. Every single weekend he'll have that option. Right, so that's what we mean by once you give Corey your availability via email, block Arbiter on the availability you gave Corey. Because Corey, for those who communicate with Corey ahead of time and you do your part, he's going to give those umpires who are registered you to A those games, even on slow weekends. Um, then the bonus structure for working piss away softball events. So we're not talking about the self-assigned rec. We're not talking about the self-assigned uh, scrimmages or friendly games during the week. If you're working events, you should let's say softball events, it's going to be like we did for baseball in the past. A hundred games will be additional so much dollars. I, I don't have the structure out there yet because I don't want to make the bonus incentive not reachable. All right, so I, I'm waiting to see how many teams keep on registering and how many potential games you have to work. But the amount of games you do work is going to be your bonus for the U Triple S A. So this is not set, but if you work 100 games, $100. 150 games, $300. 200 games, $500. So the softball umpires who aren't able to self assign because it has to go through Corey, we still want you to earn that incentive just like we do for self-assigned. Okay, so that's you will get incentives there. Steve. Self-assigned baseball and self-assigned softball, would they be mine? Yep. Okay, so 100 to Corey and 100 for you, and 200 games. Well, Corey won't self-assign. That's, that's what we're saying. So if you go 100 self-assigned, you'll get that $100 bonus for self-assigning. Through softball. Even, but you won't be able to self-assign the events on weekends for some. Okay. Only during the week. All right. Um, any questions on incentive? I, I, I wanted to be very upfront and open with that. Yes, we get paid as an association to assign sports officials. So if you're assigning yourself, that assigning fee is going to go towards the umpire, not towards the assigners. Yep. Last season, you did your pressure at a higher level. So we are not. So, the, so if you if you're ranked 150, that means you can work high school. If you're ranked 100, it's the summer college league that we do. You could still self-assign 14 you select, eight you select. So you do that. You work that those select games to self-assign. You still get that incentive. Yep. Where specifically can you see our ranking? Especially like being stuck here. Email me. Yeah, you can't see a rank. Um, the way you the way you know your rank is what games you see. So if you see 14 U um, crew chief, that means you have at least a 200 rank. If you see high school reserves, you have 150 rank. So that that's that's really the difference. So when I send out the emails and I send out 10 reserve games, and you're like, man, why do I not see these reserve games on self assigned? Well, because your rank's at 200, not at 150. So that's that's how you, that's one way you could do it. What games do you see? And the other way is just email me. Hey, what's my rank? It's 250. Well, how could I get to 200? All right, do this, this, and this. Sweet. Awesome. Um, before we go into the Arbiter Sports, question was asked, you know, can we take self-assign away? And the answer is yes. And we will. All right, that's where I am a jerk. <laughs> Jeff does it, you know, on phone calls and everything like that. So all of a sudden you wake up the next day and you don't have self-assigned anymore. It's like, why don't I have self-assigned anymore? Well, you've 
turn back three double headers Saturday morning for Saturday afternoon. I can't count on you. All right, so if you start turning back games, all right, we take self assign away. All right, so yes, I know life happens. You truly get sick. I don't usually believe and fall for the flat tire um, thing. Somebody tried to take a picture of a flat tire and I Googled that picture. Guess what came up? Same picture. Um, so again, I, I'm really, really good at interpreting human behavior. Um, and so if you abuse the system, we do take the system away. The other thing I will do that kind of makes umpires upset as well is like, I need off of this game. I say, okay, well then all of a sudden I take you off two more games and then you text message right back right away. Hey, I didn't need off those games. I know, but we don't need you on those games either. I have somebody else who's better than you who's available. All right, so again, that's part of the professionalism is when you sign up for a game, all right, adhere to it. We are understanding, we are flexible if emergencies come up, we get it. Um, so self-assigning is there for you to do the work, to get paid for the assigning work. Don't abuse it, don't abuse it. All right, Arbiter Sports, probably the, for the assigner standpoint, the most important part of this meeting. All right, so I'm gonna sign in as PSOA umpire. So official, all right? So when you get into Arbiter Sports, this is what you should see. All right, so I'm gonna get into, I always tell officials, start with your profile. So if you click on profile, your name is uh, correct, your email address is correct, your mailing address is correct, all very important. Your mailing address shows how far you are from a site to determine, yes, you could get to that game on time. So um, if anybody has moved from Hawaii to Omaha, I will not see you open for any single game whatsoever. Because guess what? There's not a road from Hawaii to Omaha. Right? And yes, we have an, uh, uh, an umpire who goes to Creighton University. Right? And I told him, you have to change your address or I can't see when you're open. Okay. You could change this address anytime. Some people, when I get off, I, I work here. I live here so I can make gains from my work. You could change this address. Five times a day, doesn't matter. So if you're leaving from work that day, go into Arbor, change the address, you're probably gonna see a whole new set of available games. Some people change their email address. If I change the email address, all right, red flags go up, bing, 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 bing. As in, I am, I am frauding your account, all right? So if I change your email address, you will have to do three more steps to prove that yes, I wanted that email address changed. If you log in underneath you, you could change your email address 10 times in a day and it will not affect anything. All right, so if you have a work email address and you want to switch it to your personal one, go in, change it. It's a lot easier for you to do it because it doesn't red flag all those firewalls that I am trying to change your account because of money fraud. All right, if you change it, no issues. And as Jeff was saying, picture. All right, pitchers speak a thousand words. So don't have a pitcher of a red solo cup drinking water. Okay, have a, a professional umpire pitcher, have somebody take a, 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 a picture on your phone so we know who you are. Um, I'm gonna go to my schedule. I'm gonna click on one of my future partners. All right, so tomorrow I'm at Cedar Bluffs. I don't think I'm at Cedar Bluffs tomorrow. That's right. All right, so boom, I'm gonna click Stephen Harris. All right, I know who it's Stephen Harris looks like now. Awesome. I'm gonna click on John Benson. Sweet, I'm gonna click on John Benson. I know who I'm working with tomorrow. All right, don't be that umpire that you don't have a picture there. Please put a picture up there so we know. Go ahead, Brian. And uh, this makes for danger. It doesn't have to be perfect. Face mask on or any of that. If the picture is a clear 
the nature of your faith? I'm trying to think. So here's beautiful Jeff Kopetsky. Here's beautiful Jake Pollard. Okay. Again, all of them are professional. And as silly as this sounds, all of them are varsity sports officials. If I go to a bunch of rec basketball officials, I won't see a pitcher. So it's like, what's the difference between high school varsity basketball officials and youth basketball officials? A simple pitcher. <laughs> Right, because if you invest time putting up a picture, you're probably going to do everything else. All right, um, since we're on schedule, all right, so here's schedule and here's self assign. All right, if I click self assign, number one, you have to be on the websites, it does not work on the app. You got to be on the full website. Number two, you got to give it 30 to 60 seconds to populate. There, there's a lot of games. And it's going through algorithms. It's going through your availability and the game's um, availability, your rank and the game's rank. All right, so there are times where I'll self-assign, boom, I'll click it, I walk away, and I'm going to do a quick errand, all right? Um, clean the dishes, feed the dog. So now here is self-assign. All right, so these are all the games I am available for. Upcoming, according to my availability. If like, oh, where's beverage? I never heard of beverage. If you click on the site, boom. You did not accept this game yet by clicking on the site. You're just trying to figure out how far is this field from my house, All right? However, if you click that word go, guess what happens? You are going to that game. You don't know how many times, oh, man, I accidentally pressed go on this game. All right. If you have fat fingers or let's see, I'm going to move this. Blow it up as high as you can blow it up. All right. So you see all the information. All right. Don't do it on a small screen if you if you can't see. And yes, it's all right. If you can't see that would make you a really good umpire. All right. Another tip, I do limit, I think it's right now, 30 days out, 10 slots in a day. And what we mean by 10 slots, it's not a game. So if there's a double header, you can pick up 10 double headers every single day. At midnight, AKA 11 o'clock central time, it's, it's open for the next day. Right, so if you pick up 10 slots at noon, 11 o'clock at night, you could pick up another 10 slots. Uh, typically, umpires who do this system, they just go on the days that are like the hardest to get games. Mondays, Fridays. Those are the days that are hardest to get games. So they make sure they self-assign Mondays and Fridays first. Now, always wait uh, on Saturdays because there's always going to be tons of opportunities on Saturdays. So it's like, oh, I don't, I'm not happy with that. I, I don't want to go to Fremont. I'm going to wait till Sean loads something else up closer than Fremont. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, shoot, Fremont's the only place I could go. All right, self-assignment. So be patient. Be, be methodical with that self-assign of what works for you. And again, you could always email, email us and say, Sean, I only see Fremont open on Saturday. Is there anything closer? And it could be, yeah, there is. All right, so then... I could get you somewhere closer to. Again, that communication piece. Um, payments. Again, you're not going to see what what uh, what you guys are going to see. Again, again, uh, because I already have my arbiter account set up. There's another communication thing where if their game is still available, they had to get off work. Ecstatic. I did that yesterday. Basketball. Somebody was by themselves. They had no idea what was coming. Showed up to the gym. They're like, oh. 
Awesome, thank you. All right. So if you don't have an Arbiter or Pay account, there will be a logo right in the middle of this page that says Arbiter Pay. You click it and you fill everything out. But literally, it is easy as you transfer money, just like Venmo, I wanna transfer $100, you enter a pin and it's there. Okay, so a lot of times people are like, when are you gonna pay me, Sean? And then I go into your account, it's like, there's $800 in your Arbiter Pay account. Like you, you have to transfer it over. It doesn't automatically go into your bank account. Okay, you could leave it in Arbiter Sports, Arbiter Pay. There's some uh, sports officials that do that. And all of a sudden at the end of the year, they have $8,000 and then boom, they book a cruise. Because right? that's what they use it for. Um, 1099s. Right, so if you worked for us last year, you made over uh, $600. The 1099 is there. They are now downloadable. Right, so you can download it, print it out. If for some reason you can't download and print it out, you have to log back out, log back in. That solves it. So the 1099s are there um, from last year. All right. Two more sections of Arbiter. And I, I can't express enough to you. This is what will help the signers the most love you. All right. Um, the red means I am not available to work. I am telling all my assignments, I'm not open to work. Okay, so if you can't work, you're not available, that's cool. We're not, we're not making you work. The blue means I have a game that day already. So if I have a game, we're good. The white is me telling Jeff Kopetsky, Jeff, I want to work all day. I am open all day long. And come June 19th, if you show you're open all day long, you just might get games all day long. All right, because that's how the series games are 8, 10, 12, 2, doubleheader at night, 6 o'clock, 8 o'clock. All right, so um, that's what the white means. But now if you have a job or you on what you are, you know you're not a morning person, so you don't want to wake up early and get to the field at 730, you could block part of the day. All right, let's say my job is, yeah, we'll keep it simple, eight to five. So now I'm going to click on the 11th. Oh, the 11th has passed, so I can't block it. All right, I'm going to go on the 22nd. What is going on? So, oh, block part of day, time range eight to 3.30. Boom. Thank you. All right. So now the 22nd is peach. So I will not see that you're available from eight o'clock in the morning till three 30 in the afternoon. But guess what I'm going to do if I see a five 15 game, I'm going to send you a five 15 game. And that's a very unique time frame because most people work till five o'clock. All right. So those umpires are available for six o'clock. So if you only work till three 30, that five 15 game, you can be my go-to umpire. Yes. Same time. When the, when the weather breaks, they're starting. That's it. March. Yep. Last week of March. And I guarantee you, Tom, if my team could play Gretna March 10th, I'm going to go play Gretna March 10th. My baseball team will play as fast as the weather allows them to play. So it might not be on their schedule, but we'll add games if it's 90 degrees in March 10th. I'll play. <laughs> All right. Right now. Right now. If you know when your birthday is and you don't want to work on your birthday, block it. I get this all the time. How many people have spouses? Boyfriends or girlfriends, do they want you working on their birthday? All right. My wife is yes, because I have to take her out after that. All right. They don't want you working. Block it. I don't basketball official. 
He won't listen to this because he's a basketball official. Yeah, uh, February 9th is my wife's birthday, so I can't work. You just find out about this yesterday? We all know what those days are, okay? Um, if your kid is graduating, block off graduation, all right? Because I almost guarantee you, even if you want to work games, that day you are going to feel guilty of not being at graduation. Be there for graduation. Don't put yourself in that uh, predicament. So yes, lock now. Yes, Brian. You can also put a range out there. So like for me, I work eight to five Monday through Friday. So you can go to that partial block between the eight to five, and then I can put like today's date, and I can put it all the way to the, and then the two dates would be like November. You know? And then I just click apply, and it will go ahead and you know set all of that for me. All right, so that's what he's talking about there. I'm not going to click apply, but if you have a set schedule, work schedule, you can go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And if you click apply, it will do that 8 to 3.30, whatever you put in that time frame, one time. So you don't have to go day by day. Right. And then I can always adjust days where I need to block a full day or I can clear a day if I'm off. All right, so what he's saying there is clear blocks. All right, so I, I will use an example this morning. I had a basketball official turn back five games at St. Vincent de Paul this morning because he was sick. Okay, so boom, 6.30, wake up, see the text message, take him off the five games. So from 6.30 till 8.15, I left the house. I was texting and I was calling while trying to make breakfast for my kids, getting ready for the day. Still did not get the games filled. I contacted 60 officials based on availability, All right? Practice is starting. I'm slowly getting text messages back. No, nope, can't work. No, can't work. No, can't work. I now I'm going from practice back home to get stuff for this meeting, making calls while driving, making text messages while driving. All based on the availability you put in arbitersports.com. Okay. Yes, I am stupid and I text and call while driving. All right. Don't put me in that situation. Don't turn back games. But I need to find a sports official. That's my job. So I'm going to do everything I can. Save you time. Yeah. I don't even I don't even call you text you if you block it, John. Um, with the partial blocks, I mean, how do we account for like you time? I like to look at the block is like that time I can leave the office, or do I need to account for? So what it the only thing that the system accounts for is travel. All right, so mm -hmm. if you live in Bennington, and so your address is Bennington and the travel to your site is 30 miles away. It's only going to account. How long is it going to take you to travel that 30 miles? Here's what I always tell umpires, sports officials. If a game starts at six, we want you there at five 30. So block yourself from five instead of blocking yourself till five 30. Cause if you block yourself um, till five 30, that's saying, Oh wait, he can make that 5.30 game All right. where you can't because of the travel. All right, so I always say, give yourself an hour buffer. So if you get off of work at five, you can make it six o'clock. So block yourself to 5.30. If you could get off work at 4.30, now block yourself to five. So you have that hour buffer. Um, the last thing I'm gonna show on here is list. We talk about education. So this will be posted tomorrow. All right, so everybody that is part of our association is here. So if you need to contact an umpire or anything like that, please use it for sports officiating purposes only. But the main thing here is forms. This is where all of our education is. All of our education from last year is still there. If you're a football fan and you think the NFL official screwed up a rule today, all of our football stuff is there. You could look up all those football rules. All right, but I would focus on baseball and softball for right now. But again, I, I will put our education against any group anywhere in America of what we offer you guys. Please take advantage of it. Um, really, the only excuse of us not knowing the rules or being understanding of the rules is we didn't take time to do it. Um, I'm going to steal Corey's thunder here. All right, two people he fears on a softball on a softball field. 
a coach or umpire that knows the rules better than him, you have control over that by knowing the rules better than that other coach and partner, or a coach or partner who only read the rule book one time. Because when you read it one time, you don't know the rules. I promise you, you don't know the rules. I'd almost go with don't read it at all. Honestly, go off with previous experience then reading the rule book one time and thinking you know the rules. Okay, so, um, and all the rule books are here. Any questions on Arbiter Sports? Okay. Here are the final notes, and I'm going to leave it on this screen, whether you're at Zoom or here in the room. This is the registration form. So if you take out your phones, pull out your camera, you do not need a QR scanner. You do not need to download anything. This will take you to the Google form that's live and active. Please complete this form. If you are going to pay Venmo, PayPal, just let me know. Cash and check, I will collect at another meeting another day. You don't have to give me check, uh, check or cash today. The meetings you can attend in the future, whether it's Zoom or here in this room, if you can make it, make it. When you get UMP app access, take advantage of it. There is so much new material on there this year, about 20% more material from last year. So why, why should I do UMP app again, Sean? Because there's 20% new material. It's not released yet. And you're like, what? Um, it's not released yet, but there will be. Purchase uniform and equipment now. I will tell you, last, last year, purchase officials, middle of April, ran out of protective gear. So if you're new, do not wait. If you're going to buy it yourself, buy it now. If you're going to buy it through um, our association, I'm going to be making orders this week because I don't want umpires not umpiring because there's no equipment available. Um, on ten, uh, ten on field training sessions, it will all be posted on Arbiter Sports. There's a lot of times people are like, oh, I didn't sign up, so I can't go. If something changes and you can attend an on field training session and you didn't sign up because the window has passed, I won't turn you away. <laughs> Instructors won't tell you to go home. All right, so if you can make it, make it. And then starting March 1st, is when the games will become available. All right, so Jeff's like, why don't you open it now? I said, well, we don't have all the umpires in there. We don't have all the schedules in there. And like I said before, I don't want you signing up for games because those are the only things available. And then all of a sudden, here comes March 1st. And it's like, man, I could have worked 50 games one block away from my house. Man, I'm not opening up till March 1st. All right, so March 1st will be the day. Make sure you all your stuff there. All your all your applications, 